Hi ho and welcome. I'm Lance Schooler, the Savvy Navigator, and we're talking about Inco Terms 2010, video part 3, 10 tips on using Inco Terms. Now this video is for information and education only. Should you require legal advice, please refer to the Inco Terms 2010 publication or to an authorized or legal practitioner in your jurisdiction. So, tip number 1, remember Inco terms are not your prime contract of sale. The seller and the buyer negotiate the contract of sale. The Inco terms need to be incorporated into that contract. Tip number two, consider terms appropriate to the goods. If we were to be shipping coal from Australia to China, would we use free carrier Broome Airport Australia? I think not. We'd use a, a bulk carrier and we probably use a term like free on board Port Broome, Australia. Tip number three, consider terms appropriate to the transport required. If we're using air freight in our contract, then free on board would not be an appropriate term to use because free on board is one of the rules for sea and the inland waterway transport only. Rather, what we should be doing is consulting the rules for any mode of transport and what we might decide on is free carrier Sydney Airport. Tip number four, decide who will organise the transport. The seller and the buyer have to organise the transport from the seller's country to the buyer and that can involve local transport in either of their two countries as well as the main carriage of international transport. Tip number five, decide who will organise the insurance if required. The seller and the buyer have an interest in the cargo, a financial interest and an insurable interest. If the seller is going to be responsible for the insurance premium and incorporating that into their uh, invoice and their contract price, then cost insurance and freight could be used for sea freight or for any mode of transport, carriage and insurance paid. Tip number six, consider local customs and practices at the port or place. If we are sending a very large crate like we can see there, we might consider that there'd be uh, handling equipment available in the destination port. However, we might find that there's only local labourers and no handling equipment. A bit of a problem. Tip number seven, consult the guidance notes because in choosing which uh, Inco term is to be employed in the contract between the seller and the buyer. Consideration of the guidance notes can help in figuring out which is the best one in the circumstances. Tip number eight, choose the appropriate rule. Out of the Inco terms, one has to be chosen. So choose the rule, agree on that, and then incorporate that rule into the contract of sale. Tip nine, specify the place as precisely as possible where the delivery is to occur have the precise details of the point, the place and the port and that helps to be very specific. Tip number 10, incorporate Inco Terms 2010 into your contract. Remember the contract of sale is the prime document. The Inco term chosen should be incorporated into that contract. Well that's it for now. Our 10 tips on using Inco terms. Our next video will be Has the ship's rail fallen off the ship? <laughs>